Hey, uh, John King again with Give Them A Voice Foundation. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been stepping you through a process of how to buy a human being and the fact that it's very much a reality. We do live in a bubble in America, and so many people still think that human and sex trafficking is something that happens in Asia. doesn't happen here. Yet 38% of all the income of the $32 billion worldwide is American money. 25% of all sex tourism is Americans engaged in sex tourism. 20% of all pornographic child images are generated from American children. And 55% of all child pornography sites are actually based in the USA. So this is very much an issue that is happening at home. It's happening here and it's happening in the Western world. Now, when I engaged, when I came across this advertisement, they were offering the sale of human beings in New Jersey. And I responded and I've been entering into a correspondence and we're at a stage now where this is being handed over our investigation team. But I just wanted to bring you up to speed on this. So far, we are 12 or 13 emails in. I've entered into the negotiations and discussions, selections of um, human beings to buy. And in this series of emails, this is a, a week ago now, went through, they guaranteed to me total satisfaction, and then they went on to tell me how they were going to do it. Uh, these, these girls are held in a compound um, in Asia. They told me about one particular one that they'd sold into the Midwest in America. They'd been trained in a whole range of um, pleasing activities, both as domestic servants and sexual servants. Um, it takes about five weeks for payment, but they come in, they actually come in on a pre-approved um, H-1B visa, which allows them to leave legally here in the US. Now, at some point that visa will run out or they'll have to be farmed out to a job or they'll just disappear um, into the, the cracks within our culture. So they went through and they gave me a range of pricing. I can get a human being from Myanmar for $6,500. Vietnam, seven and a half grand. The Chinese are more expensive, they're 12 grand. Malaysians, 11 and a half. And so it goes down on a list of, of nationalities. Um, this includes medical screening, flight, and relocation. So I don't have to pay for flights on top of this. They guaranteed me that they're HIV and um, sexually transmitted disease free. And they went on there. There is a little bit of a caveat. I can only buy two human beings at once. So I responded back to them and I asked for references. Uh, they're based out of California, uh, which is where the communications are coming from. Um, they told me about this, this um, Asian person sold into the Midwest. They've given me the name of someone, their phone number and email to follow up and get references so I can make sure that the goods were delivered uh, in a timely fashion, uh, that they were um, in a fit state when they arrived and there was no problem. Again, they reassured me of the ages of the people involved and where they were held. And they wanted to know if I was disease free and if I had no records. And I guaranteed them that I was a good and upstanding citizen. And then I asked them for a selection. So I got a selection of nine pictures of individuals. And I went back and selected two of them and I was given details on them. Uh, one lady is from Pakistan. Uh, the other one's from Japan. The lady from Pakistan is apparently very well-mannered and very attractive, has a nice demeanor, and goes through and says that she's excellent at banking a range of things. Um, apparently she has a high sex drive, goes through and gives me her dimensions, her weight, her breast size, and she, apparently she's very obedient and she's willing uh, to be bred. And then the second one, a similar, goes through a whole range of things, but into a whole list of other things that this particular person has been trained to do uh, sexually. And then a reassurance that she's very fertile and that breeding her would be a great extension and a way for me to recoup the cost of the initial outlay for the human being. So, we're at a stage where I said where it goes on to our investigation team and they'll take it from here. And just to see what depth it is, if it's, you know, it, it could be a scam. I'm, I'm fully aware of that. But the, the challenge is that there was something like this um, that happened um, three years ago that some people that I know were involved in actually shutting down something like it. So this is a resurfacing of the same organisation under a, a different banner as what we've been bled, bled to, uh, 
led to believe. So it comes to a point where you have to make a decision. Now, we, we all have to make a decision. William Wilberforce says, said that you may choose to look the other way, but you can never say again that you did not know. If you've read anything with what we're doing with Giving Them a Voice or watched any of the vi videos, that there comes a point where you're complicit with your knowledge, that you're aware that human and sex trafficking is something that goes on. And I hope you are suitably enraged at it, uh, suitably unsettled at it, because it affects um, somewhere between 2.6 and 4.3 million people are trafficked in and out of America. I know what the government stat says, and, but, but it depends on where you go digging and what you go looking at. Um, we believe they're a lot higher, purely on the basis of the people that move through our borders, of our own nationalities or other nationalities. So the very first thing that I want to suggest that you do is that you have to talk about it. You've got to bring awareness. Now that you know, you have to tell. You have to, and I want to encourage you to engage in active conversations about the reality of human trafficking, modern day slavery, and sex trafficking as a subset of that. Be aware of it. Have conversations with people about it. Be engaged with it and stay enraged about it. Please do. Don't let this settle into the sort of thing that, oh, well, that's sad, and you have to think about it over a cup of tea and a bicky in the morning. You have to graduate from that passive stance of, wow, it's sad it happens today to, Wow, it's sad it happens today and I'm going to do something about it. The second thing, there's awareness, and I think the second thing is education and training. We just had another great seminar uh, last night, actually, with a group of people, and we, we took them through one of our curriculums on um, education and training. We, we informed them about what was going on. We educated them how to recognize the signs. And we trained them on how to protect their children and their families from falling into the trap of human or sex trafficking. What to look for, how to stay engaged, what are the signs? And those are very important things. So the first thing you can do is be aware. The second thing you can do is be educated and trained. And the third thing I want you to actively encourage you to do is um, step up. Step up yourself um, locally or nationally with an organization like ours something like Give Them A Voice Foundation or another organization that does the same uh, level of work, we've all got three things to give, time, talent, and treasure. Now, some people have money and, and they support us regularly, which is phenomenal. And we thank them for it because it allows us to keep on going into the universities, the colleges, and holding events where people are targeted and um, are in danger, but they don't have the resources to, to facilitate that. But other people have got time. Other people have got talent. And we were approached last night about a lady who has both time and talent. She's got a relationship in a massive network of high schools and universities, and she's going to give her talent and her time in order to facilitate us going into all of those. We can all do something about this. If William Wilberforce, in one man in one lifetime, can have a major impact on the transatlantic slave trade, Within the modern era, it's, it was a couple of hundred years ago, I get that, but it's not, it's not thousands of years in the past. If he can do that, surely a band of brothers and sisters, if we get together and we determine to do something about that, I don't care if it's a $36 billion industry. If we get together and we do something about it, there's enough of us to make a change and there's enough of us to make a difference. Thank you.